Okay, we're going to make some puff pastry. Mainly show the year 10s how to make it. We've got um, some strong flour in here. So question one is what type of flour is strong flour? So I've got 250 grams, 200 grams of real butter and this butter has to be cold. So I'm cutting it up. So this is different than normal short crust pastry. I'm going to cut it up but I'm not going to rub it together at all. I'm just going to put the water straight in. Uh, name other foods that use this flour. So other foods that use this flour be shoe pastry and bread. They're the two main things that use the strong flour. So this flour goes into, the butter goes into the flour and I've got some water in this jug. So I mix it about, but I don't rub it together because I don't want it to be short. I want it to be the opposite, right? So then I put in this water, 120 millilitres of water. This would be twice as much as you'd need for your exam. So if you're making this for your exam, you'd need only half as much as this. Uh, so you need 125 grams. 125 grams. So I've got 200 grams of butter in and 250 grams of flour. So it's a ratio of five to four. Oh, then what, number three, what's the protein in the flour? That is gluten. What is the ratio of fat to flour? So four parts fat and five parts flour. So there's a little bit more. So I need a little bit more water in there. I've got 120 in there, but it needs a tiny, tiny bit more. So I'm going to put about another 10 millilitres in, about a tablespoon or so. So into a board, then I'm going to roll it out. Now this is an unusual thing because it rises through steam and lamination. That might even be the next one. So the next one is, um, no, why can't vegetarians eat lard? So I've used butter, but lard is in sometimes short crust pastry, but that's made from pork fat, so you can't eat that wouldn't, can't, vegetarians can't have that. Number six, what method to make puff pastry? So I'm going to put layers in here. And it's actually, there's a cake called uh, mill fleur, which is like a custard slice or a cream slice. I like them, they're decorated. And that, that's French for a thousand layers of thousand leaves. So the first thing first, this one is not short, so it should be a bit, so it should be a bit stretchy. So I've got some flour in a bowl here, or if you've got a flour shaker, I'm going to roll it out, and I'm going to roll it out uh, four times longer then it's wide. So roll it, and it's meant to have streaks of butter in, so it's going to be marbly, and you normally rest this. I'm not going to rest it a lot because I'm going to stop you keeping me waiting. We're going to be making this. Normally, when we make this, we only have our lessons, and we only make the puff pastry. But today I'm going to, hopefully in the hour, make it, make the puff pastry, make some Cornish pasties, and sausage rolls, and something sweet. So now, so I need to kind of keep it straight. This is one of the rules. You want to make sure there's enough flour under it. That's one of them. And make it four times, roughly four times. We do a thing with a book fold. Turn it into the middle. And this should be roughly the same. So make sure it's and into the middle. So that's going to be four layers now. Yep, so that's four layers. A little bit more flour down. And you need plenty of flour because this is a little bit wet. It's meant to be a bit wet. So then we can, if we were putting this in the fridge now to rest it, we'd put one little dot in so we know how many times we folded it. This is going to be the second time, and we do four, five layers to make a thousand layers, because it goes four, sixteen, sixty-four, two hundred and fifty-six, one thousand and twenty-four. That's roughly good, into here. So I might do another job in a minute. Now, after a while, it will start stretching, it will start bouncing back. If you leave it to rest, which is probably one of the questions, I don't know, what method, uh, Half pastry, this is called lamination. Number two, two raising agents. It's a physical raising agent and it raises through the steam. So as it gets hot, it's, it, 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 in the oven, there's water in it, makes it rise up, then it sets and it, and it was set like thicker than it should be. You know, like when you've rolled it out. So as you can see, it's sticking to my rolling pin, so you need a little bit of flour in there. That's another rule. So there's a few rules here. Uh, make sure it's nice and cold. The water has to be ice cold, and the butter will straight out the fridge. So then we've done two. So this is going to be the third one. That's the third roll. So that is now four, 16, 64 layers. Another two rolls, but I might do one more roll. And then, because really, we we're meant to let it rest, yeah? So as you can see, it's stretching now. It's stretching, you see this in the and it's coming back in. Let me see if I can do that. So stretch it, and it slowly comes back in. Hopefully you can see that. Let me 
watch that as I roll it. I'm gonna roll it and then I'm gonna roll it this way so you can see it a bit better. I'm gonna roll it. And as you can see it moves back in there. Hopefully you can see that. Let me have a quick look at the camera. So hopefully you should have been able to see that. So so we've done three, this is going to be the fourth roll. So I'm going to leave that for a little bit while I do the next thing, which is make some of the filling. So now I'm resting it. Now I would normally go back in the fridge, and if you make it and you've got plenty of time, you can put it back in the fridge, because that will let it relax a little bit quicker. I'm just washing my hands at the moment, shaving it all off, all the pastry off, then I'm going to make the Cornish pasty filling. And the Cornish pasty filling is normally potato, swede, so I need a peel of potato, put all this in a rubbish bowl, potato, swede, mince, salt and pepper. Now you can put other things in it as well, leeks, dilton, cheese, but a normal Cornish pasty says the three main things. And, and let me see what rules are. Uh, why should we let the pastry rest? That makes the gluten rest. What is the song about pasties. So you probably heard the song of it before, even though you didn't know what it was about. They do Oggy Oggy Oggy. Uh, years ago, down in Devon and Cornwall, more Cornwall, they would shout out, the guys selling the Oggies, would shout out Oggy Oggy Oggy, and people would reply, Oi Oi Oi. Or they would, and also sometimes miners used to have these, and they wouldn't eat the crust, they, because they didn't wash their hands down the mines. Normally know where to wash their hands. They say they used to, have all coal on their hands so they wouldn't have to eat the crust. So that's another thing about them. So, chopping board. Hopefully I've got my knife somewhere. And here's my knife. So I won't need this whole potato. So I've not got a lot of mince. So cut the potato and then we're going to cut it into like thin, thin chips. First, we're going to do it quite small. You don't want the potato too big we're going to put it in raw otherwise it won't cook in the pasty yeah skinksters a company they're well known for making these so these are going to be about not far less than centimeter dice these are going to be about three millimeters or so by three millimeters by three millimeters don't have them too big they will be okay as long as you don't if you cook them and let the pasties rest they'll carry on cooking but we're going to have them. you can grate it as well but that's a bit cheating, so if you can't cut things up very well, you can grate it. So that's it, one bit more potato. So as you can see, these are quite small. I don't need them super, super small, but this is about the right size. You can do thin. Some pasties have, I'll show you one thing some pasty companies do. They have, it cuts quite thinly one way, but then they have it bigger the other way. Then this is a bit thin. A cut called Paysan, that's not one of the questions on there. But then they're bigger, but they're still nice and thin. So they're thin, but they're they're quite thin. So that's the potato. Um, I'm going to do one onion as well. Oh, some onion as well. I'm get in. I've only got red onion. Oh, have I? I know that I'm white onion. So I'll use a white onion, but a red onion would be fine. Any type of onion, just gives it a bit of flavour. Cut the top off, cut the bottom off. So I've done it four rolls so far. I don't think, oh, have I done, no, I haven't done four, I haven't done four turns, I haven't folded it yet. So it needs one more time, one more time. So I'm going to just prepare the filling with the vegetables, then I'm going to roll it out a bit more. Okay, so I only need about half an onion here. 90% of the way through, spin it round. don't need all this onion, but I'm going to do a vegetarian one, like a cheese and onion one if we've got enough, to show you, because obviously vegetarians won't want the meat. So I'm going to make sure I save some of that. So I'm going to get a little bowl out. I'm going to use my pastry bowl, it's in the other pastry, and so I'm going to save some of my onion there. Yeah. Then I'm going to do the swede. So I've got a bit of swede here. Uh, some people put carrot in it, but I'm not going to put any carrot in. I'm just going to put swede. So nice and thin. Similar to the potato, and you need a tiny bit of the sweet. Yep, so one of the big wings. Normally, do this at school. Hopefully, we're still going to make these when you come back sometime. So, puff pastry is one of the real high skill dishes. So, um, we'll definitely be making puff pastry, and we normally make it and use it over two or three lessons when we make quite a bit of it. 
So it's a real good thing for your exam. A bit like the shoe pastry and the chicken, I never ran pie, I think they're about the four best things. Anything with a chicken cut off the bone. So as you can see, that's there. I'll put this all in here. Then I'm gonna roll it out a bit more. Move the dropping board so you can see what I'm doing. Move that so it's out of the way. So a little bit of flour. So now this is more or less ready to roll, as you can see. And now it's easier to roll now, even though I've only rested it for about five, less than five to 10 minutes. I'm gonna roll it even a little bit bigger now. Now it's letting me roll it. It makes this, so the idea of letting it relax is you can roll it a lot easier, because this was getting quite hard to roll, as you can see now, it's getting quite big. So I'm gonna do one more roll after this. This is the fourth roll. So this is four, 16, 64, 256. 256 layers in there. And then we're going to do one more. And there's another way. If you look on my YouTube channel, it says um, puff pastry in eight minutes. That's only me making the puff pastry. That's a different way of doing it with grated butter there. So this one here, I'm going to roll it out a bit. Because we've got one more to do. That was four. As you can see, I'm struggling to roll it now. It's, it's shrinking back. So that's why the, you need to, and normally you need to just put it in the fridge and that would be better. So we've done four. So just we'll put four little dots in it. Sometimes I forget. So we've got some mince here. So this mince, 20% fat mince. So it's got quite a high quantity. By law, it shouldn't have any more than 20%. So to make it healthier, one way would be to buy lean I mince. Mean. So I'm going to put all this in there. Actually, I'm going to save a little bit for a reason. I might make a bed for chiclana. So a bed for chiclana, and then I've got some salt in this. And some pepper. Oh, a little bit of pepper here. So it depends if you like it peppery. And you can put loads of different things into flavour it now. You can put curry powder, you can put chilli powder, fresh chilli, loads of different herbs and spices. But I'm not going to put anything too unusual in it today. But you can put loads of different things in it. So mix this stuff a lot. And that should make, depends on how big pasties are, that'll probably make four reasonable sized pasties. And obviously if you want, you can have a lot bigger content of potato in it. This looks quite meaty. Some potatoes you buy from the shop, they have, sorry, some pasties you buy from the shop, they put loads of potatoes in, because obviously a lot cheaper than the meat. So I've also got some sausages here, the sausage rolls, so I'll get these ready while I've got meat on my hand. And these flavor are Cumberland sausages, but obviously any type of sausage. And you could put some herbs and spices in these as well. Uh, but while I've got my hands with the meat on, I'm going to cut them, the skins on four of them. Well, actually, on all six of them, actually, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to peel them while I'm here. So I don't know how easy these skins are going to come off. Sometimes they come off quite easy, sometimes they don't. So these ones aren't from the butcher, but they're reasonable quality ones. So that's one there. And I'm putting it on the plastic. So you can you just put the, just leave the skins on and put them in there, but we normally take the skins off. And you can buy sausage meat. Oh, I bought some sausage meat just before Christmas and it was reduced. I should have used that if I thought about it. That would have been a good way of using it up in this. So I've made um, some Scotch eggs the other day. So let's see what the next question is. This full rules and following pastry, I think I've said that. So let's, let's give you a few. Ice cold water for puff pastry. When you're rolling it, as you can see, I've put it nice and straight. Because if I fold this up, then you won't have a thousand even layers. So that's one of the important ones. Ice cold water, you can put lemon juice in the water to strengthen the gluten, didn't have any. Um, when you do it, put enough flour so it doesn't stick to the table, but obviously not too much, but it does take quite a lot and don't rub it together too much. So most pupils, when they do it, they put the butter in and they start rubbing it together, but it's meant to have lumps in it because then otherwise it gets too short. So you definitely don't want to mix it, uh, uh, rub it together. Why do we let the pastry rest? I said that. What is the song of self pastry? Oh, how heavy is an egg? Because I'm doing some egg washing in a minute. That's why I put that on there. So that should be 53 grams. So I'm gonna wash my hands again. Now we're ready for the pastry. So we've given it four rolls, so you need one more roll for it. Yeah, so one more roll. So, so, so the bigger you roll it, then the bigger it is when it's folded up. So if, if you can roll it a bit bigger, then it's a, 
advantageous here, but try and make it straight. I'm going to show you how to make it straight in a minute. Otherwise, we're not going to get even layers. So here, to make it straight, use the rolling pin unless you've got a long, a long object that you can use. Come on the end. So this is this. This is a thousand layers, believe it or not. So it's a thousand layers. Oh, there's one way to do this. It's called uh, that's called a foot fold. There's another way to do it, and you only get three at a time. But I'm doing it four at a time. And I can even make this a bit bigger. I can't make it any bigger than the table. I'll just make a mess on the floor. That's a, okay, that's the part pastry we made, by the way. So I'm going to roll it out, and I'm going to do some other fillings. Because uh, now I need to let it rest, because I can see it's being a lot harder to roll out. So now, as well as... Uh, so part pastry can be made for sweet and savoury stuff. So... Now I'm going to peel two apples. I've got two little apples here. I put the rubbish in the jug. And I've got a bowl. I could just put it all in the same bowl. That would be like this. I'll put it all in the bowl. Then I'm going to cut the apple up. Once I've done these, I'm going to show you something fancy. You don't have to use the machine. I've got, I've got a machine called a, a mandolin, which can cut it really, really thin. And I'm going to core it, which we don't very often do. So I'm going to just put the apple there for a minute. So I've got two just eating apples, you could use cooking apples, any type of apple. You can leave the skin on it actually. Or some people do some roses actually, they look quite good. Maybe I'm going to show you that as well. Yeah, see how much puff pastry we've got here. If we've got some cinnamon, another thing we do is a biscuit called palm airs. They make a biscuit dough thing rather than just the cake. There's loads of things with puff pastry by the way. So seeing, I'm going to get a clean chopping board. when I'm doing the apple on it. So I'm going to core it. Make sure it's away from the raw meat. I'm going to core it. Now you don't have to core it. You can just slice it up, but I'm going to do something fancy here. Uh, Gordon Ramsay does this on his, um, if you put in Gordon Ramsay apple puffs, he does this and he does it with a blowtorch, which we're going to do as well, which I'm going to show you to finish it off, but you don't have to finish it with a blowtorch. So we can all call the apple best we can. Put all the rubbish in the rubbish bowl. And I'm going to get a tray. And I'm going to show you how to... I haven't got a lot of room here to show you. Otherwise I'd normally put this on the clean part of the bench, yeah? So we get the mandolin, which is here. And it slices it really thin. So you don't probably have one of these, so you just have to slice it with a knife. Uh, so this, this only got one level on this though. Uh, it's only got one, and this is called a guard, so I can't cut myself. Let's come off that goes down here. Uh, so let me think, that should be pushed in. Right, apple goes in here. The one that's good is better quality one in this. So I have got one that's really easy at home. Uh, in the Navy we have these metal ones, they're really good. Far better than these, but obviously a lot more expensive. I don't know if they still use them. So I'm just going to show you this. Now this guard, come off and you're going to push it in. For some reason it's coming out. So the one at school, which I'll show you sometime. A bit better, uh, a bit more robust than this. That's it, all the apple done. Now you can just put pureed apple on in things, and that'll be like an apple puff. But this would just make it nice and thin. I'm gonna leave that for the minute. Actually, some of this is a bit too thin now, as you can see, really thin, but it's a nice, really thin which we're gonna use. So I'm gonna move the apple out of the way. I'm gonna probably use the apple first. and they just in case I put it on by mistake. The school loads of pupils do that, so let's not do that. So I'm going to roll it, so it's been five times, so I'm ready to use it now basically. So I'm going to roll it out a bit, do the egg wash, and we need it uh, about a, thick, a bit thinner than a pound coin. Yeah, so if you've got the, and we're trying to roll it out nice and square rather than like the, the map of Ireland, yeah? 
as you can see. You have to push down quite hard. If I left this to rest, it'd be far, far easier. So I think I'm going to do the apple ones first. Not too big, just a little bit thinner on the sides. I can bring this a little bit thicker there. This would make pasties, so I need something to cut the pasties. So I could probably use my flour bowl there, or a saucer, a tin, anything you like. So a plate might be a bit too big, depending how big your pasties you want to be. You can have more different sizes. I can cut them this size, you can get proper cutters, but just going to show you so you can utilize stuff at home. So I'm going to make one pasty out here. I'm going to do, do loads of cutting. I'm going to make some of the sweet stuff first. So then I can use the meat straight afterwards and I don't contaminate any of it. So, there's one round one for the pasty. There's one pasty. I'm going to make a small pasty. Uh, get it round, make sure you cut it so it's near the edge so you don't waste any. I'm going to do two of those because I'm going to do, uh, three actually. Because I'm going to do a sweet one, uh, a sweet apple puff thing. And I'm also going to do, so I don't want to use too much of this, because I'm going to do the, so I'm going to do those two actually, and then I'm going to do that as a sweet one. And I might do a cheese, uh, so a sweet one, so yes, yeah, so I was trying to, to use too much, so I've got enough for the sausage rolls, see, because I, I need this part here for the sausage rolls, but I might go into it a bit, so then the way that it, that's just enough for the sausage rolls. So I'm going to risk that's just enough for the sausage rolls, it's mushing it, but still. So I can always re-roll it out, but I'm trying to do it without re-rolling out too much. So the first one I'm going to do is the apple one. Put this on here. Then move some of this out of the way. Then I'm going to put the apple sliced apple on. Ah, so this, I think this was one of the questions. I think I had it on there and I took it off. Why does the apple go brown? It's called exemic browning. So exemic browning. So I'm putting this on here. So I'm going to put this so you can see. I think this might be in the way, so I'm going to move some of this out of the way so I can put this down so you can see it. So I think you can see it better at the back. So I'm going to put it here, hopefully you can see this, yep. And when they come out of the oven, I'll move it in there. So the apple all the way round, then I'm going to brush it with a bit of butter. Now I've put out of the butter, bottom, put it in the bottom of the oven. Maybe that's a bit gone a bit too melted that a bit too much now probably it's been in quite a while. Yeah. I'm just gonna melt it in the microwave because sometimes it sometimes it um, spits a bit and actually covers the thing from. So once you do this apple, try and use it straight away. Now loads of ways to stop it going brown. Obviously I'm gonna cook mine straight away. Now this would have been better if it was whole slices of apple. It's gets mushed up a bit here. Nice whole, it would look far neater with whole slices. So my mandolin, I should have just cut it by hand, really, that would have been better. And I'm going to sprinkle it with some sugar. And that just goes in the oven. Then we're going to put some, when it comes out, and you can dock it first with a fork if you want to. This bunch is just going to be all right, just about. I've started to get, go on a little bit. But this will stop it drying out, the fat will stop it drying out, a bit like chicken without the skin on dry. So I'm going to put a little bit of butter on it. Butter and sugar, and that's what makes toffee, obviously. So it'll like be a bit of like a toffee flavour. And then when it comes out, we're going to sprinkle it with icing sugar and use the blowtorch. Mm. So that's that. Oh. oh, it's reminding me something. They eat normally, some have not open up most of those, so they won't be very good at doing it. That's the sweet one, so I'm going to leave that for a minute and see if there's anything else sweet. I might use some of the other bits. So we've got two, three things here, so I'm going to do a meat pasty. This is going to be for sausage rolls, and these are going to be for something sweet. So we could make a jam puff in here, we just put a little bit of jam in it and fold it over. And you can do a triangle. And you can, oh, I can show you something fancy here. So you can even roll it a bit bigger for this one, so I'm going to thinner, because I'm going to roll it over. So 
So out of a circle, I'm going to make a triangle, which is going to be, because you can just make it nice and easy. And you can do a round, you can just fold it in half like so. You can fold it in half like so. But I'm going to make a triangle out of this. This isn't one of the questions, but I might make it one of the questions. Um, I'm going to put some jam in the middle. Now I've got an egg here. You can use water or egg. Crack the egg. Put that in a rubbish bowl with the brush. Add a little bit of oil on. I'm going to brush it. Yeah, but I'm going to make a triangle, so I'm going to show you something. You can do this. So if I put one side in, then the other side, then the third side, and as you can see, that is a triangle. So I've made a triangle out of it, but you can just make it, fold it in half, just so it's only something a bit different. This one can get egg washed. Uh, you don't have to egg wash it. You can just brush it in water and sugar. But egg washing is... Uh, Good, especially for the Cornish pasties, that would be good. So now we're going to do, we're going to make some sausage rolls. I'm going to make one round, another round one here, actually, thinking about it, because I'm only going to use this bit for, to show you the sausage rolls. I'll dig it up here, but then I don't need too much. And I've got a few different things. So we need something for, well, one of the questions is to do with a vegetarian. Where are we up to? Uh, we've done that one. 50 to six, 53 to 63 grams of medium egg. Oh, what do the four numbers mean on an egg? So O, organic, or O or zero. Um, one is free range, two is barn, three is caged. Um, what two eggs, do the, what two jobs does the egg do in sausage rolls? So seeing it says that, I'm gonna do that first, actually. So we're gonna put the egg on first. You don't have to put the egg on first. You can put the sausage on first, but seeing we're talking about the egg. Now you can put these on. Now, if you haven't got enough, so if you've got enough, for instance, we won't need to make them any smaller, but pretending you've got this amount of pastry and only this amount of sausage, you can put a little bit of flour in your hand, and then you can roll them, and it goes further. So you don't have to do this. The sausage rolls don't normally have loads and loads of loads and loads of sausage in it when you buy them, unless you really want them really thick. Then we roll it over there. As I say, this was pushing it on here, so we roll it round. And you can have the flap if you like and do it in the fall. I don't normally do that. Then with the back of the knife, hopefully you can see that in the back of the knife. Then if you have the great plate ones, they're about this size. But if you want them a bit smaller, I'm going to kick four out of them. Yeah, ah, and I could have egg washed it first actually. So I could have egg washed it first, and it's going to be it into 20. It's definitely quicker to egg wash it first, guys. So that's important. So we get. Uh, and you can egg wash it before it goes on the tray as long as you've got the paper. Or if you've got it on the paper, you shouldn't be doing it on the metal tray because then you get over. So make sure you do get them these kept. So what I'm going to do, it does two things, the egg on here. One, it sticks it down together so it doesn't come open. And one, it gives it a glaze. So I'm going to do one without the egg wash on and you'll see when it comes out, it won't look so shiny. So it's called glazing or make it shiny, that's what other people say. So if it was in his hand, you'd get a point three, just so you know about that. So pasties. So while I've got the egg wash in my hand, just gonna stick it down. So if I just put it down, then it might come open, yeah? So one on here, I'm gonna do a little one here, and then I'm gonna use something else for the rest. So I'm gonna make this into, I'm gonna use all this for a pasty at the end, or the sausage roll. Or I might make a thing called a, now another rule is for the pastry, which I've not said earlier, Rather than screw this in a ball, I should be folding it neatly so it does goes even layers. So as you see, I'm not screwing it up. I'm putting it in, in layers, and it, it shouldn't be quite so bad, but obviously it won't be 100%. But if I fold it over and then roll it, it would be not, I haven't destroyed the layers completely. So now with the mints here, and the next question is um, eggs. Oh. Oh, eggs, eggs do loads of things. So I'm going to try and get these done first, then I'm going to tell you about the eggs, because otherwise I'm going to... Because once these are in the oven, they can get cooking. So, quite a lot of meat there, as you can see. Quite a big one, this one. Then, we do... I'm rather than the dinosaur, so I'm going to bring it so you can see, because I don't think you can see there. I'm going to bring it round. This is called cooking, And the gangsters pasties are done like this. So 
you can do it just with a fork, but the Ginks just passes it around like this. A nice big pasty there, you're gonna see it when it comes out. Then I'm gonna make a couple of small ones here. And this one, I'm gonna make another one with this as well. So I'm gonna make another big one with this. Hopefully I've got enough flour, a little bit more flour on. So I'm gonna make two big ones. And then I'm gonna make a, a small one. And then something for the veg for vegetarian. So I think that's one of the questions. I mean, what is a lacto veg a lacto ovo vegetarian? Well lacto means um, that's the sugar in the milk. So lacto is to do with dairy and ovo is to do with egg. And everybody thinks the lacto vegetarian can't eat dairy, but that he can eat dairy. Oh well, I have made the sausage rolls. I forget now, I thought I hadn't made the sausage rolls. I did say actually I'd make a thing called a bed for chiclana, so I'm gonna make that. So that is a bit like a pasty, but it's got, so rather than a pasty, I'm gonna make a bed for chiclana. So it's a bit like a sausage roll, but a fat one, and sometimes it's got pork and beef in it, so I'm gonna put some sausage meat in this mixture here. So this bit here, I'm gonna have without pastry. So if you were like on a bit of a diet or something, you could have, I'm gonna cook this a bit like a burger. So I'm just going to put this, it's all good on the tray, it might feel a bit, the fat will come out of it. So I need to wrap it up in either foil, I've got some foil here, I have to use one hand here. What I'm going to do this, so I'm going to have to wash my hands and get the foil out in a minute. So I'll leave that for a minute, or I'll use some paper. So I can, I've got some paper here, so I can use paper or foil. So you could just make a big burger out of it, but I'm going to make a bit of a burger. So I'm going to make it not too, so it cooks quite quickly. Wrap it up. And you can cook things in paper. That's actually called um, the pot of the well-known cooking method, right? So I can put that on there. And then if there's going to be enough room there, it can go in another little dish. So I can get another little dish for that. Come in here. Come in and get your sandwich tin. That's going to go straight in the oven. Yep. Uh, this is going to be a bed for chiclana, so I'm going to do sausage and so it's got beef and mince, so you don't have to have the onion and potato. So one end, this is going to have apple, believe it or not, um, it, and this is one thing they used to do. Um, but in Bedfordshire, the farmers have this, so the farmers' wives would come out many years ago and give them one of these, and it would, it would have the, the sweet in one end. I won't put quite so much in, I won't cook. And, and to make sure, and I'll show you how I know which end is which. This is quite thick, so take a little bit of this out. A little bit, yeah, take a while to cook. Yeah, so I'm just going to have the apple in one end. So I've got some pureed apple out of my garden, and I've frozen it last year, and I've got six apple trees in the garden. So I freeze those, I peel them, and freeze it. And I've got some apple here. And I put apple in my end, and that's one thing they would have done in the bed for chiclana. You can put other sweet stuff in it, but apple's well known because obviously apples in England is probably about the most popular fruit that's grown here. So you can put something to segregate it. So where this pork anyway, pork goes quite well with apple sauce, but I'd put quite a little bit of pastry in there if I wanted to. So just to show you that, I don't normally do that, but you could put so it doesn't sort of mix up with each one, you could do something similar to that, but I don't normally bother with that, but if you want to, you can. So now we have wash it like normal. So this is called a bed for chiclana. I'm gonna add that to the list actually, it's not on my questions, but it's going to be. So what is a bed for chiclana? So that's um, meat one end and something sweet the other end. So this end is a sweet end, so I'm gonna mark it on purpose. I'm gonna put a little different pattern on this one, and I'm gonna sprinkle that in with sugar, then I'm gonna know, yeah? So this is a bit like a pasty, and I quite like apple with pork and roast pork and things, so that's going to be good. This apple's a little bit runny, but it's normally we just have it with yogurt or make apple crumble with it. So I'm going to lift this gently up onto the tray without the apple spilling out, if I can. Move one of the sausage rolls. And the last thing I'm going to do, so, oh, so I haven't egg washed the pasty. I'm egg washing the pasty. And the year 10s don't have to make this. Um, and if you did want to make it, you know, they don't have to make all the dishes I've made, just make one thing with it. But I'm just showing you how versatile it is. So that's ready to go in. I haven't egg washed that one on purpose. 
So hopefully you can see that. So that's all the things here. Bed for Shikranga. And uh, oh, sugar. So I haven't put the sugar in. So let me get some sugar. A little bit of sugar. Then I know which ends are sweet. And it's going to be nice and easy to know. But... And you can seal it actually. One thing I didn't do there, I didn't seal it. You can seal the ends. So especially this end, if you think the apple's going to come out, I could seal it a little bit. But because um, the apple looks a bit runny, I don't think the meat will. It's a bit like a sausage roll. So I'm not going to bother with that one. This goes in the oven. 190 degrees, then I'm going to do a vegetarian. Oh, I've got the sweet ones going in. The sweet ones to go in. Then I'm going to put in the vegetarian dish. So I'm going to get another bit of paper, another dish. It takes quite a lot of this, as you can see. So on here, I'm going to make two different vegetarian things. I've got some cheese here somewhere. So I'm going to do it and some spinach. So rather than just do a pasty, I'm going to do something different. So this one's going to have spinach on, and this one's not going to have spinach on. Now cheese, now that will melt a bit. I've got a little bit of sun-dried tomatoes here. So I'm just going to go over here and chop it up. On my chopping board, if you can't see this. I'm just going to chop the sun-dried tomatoes up a bit. So one sort of like cheese and tomato. Bit like a pizza in effect. Uh, oh, some fresh tomato as well. And you can put anything like red onion in. Oh, I've saved some onion, haven't I? So the red onion would have been good on this, but I've used the white onion. So the red onion would show up better on this. Some, uh, so I'm going to put some fresh tomato on this one, and some tomato on this one. Just cut that bit up in half. And I've got some different coloured cheeses. So I've got some red Leicester and some cheddar, which is going to go on both. Now you could make sausage rolls with this, or the equivalent with the cheese, the cheese rolls, or you could make a cheese pasty, but I'm just going to show you something different, because then with all these different colours, you're going to see this. Uh, have I got anything else? So I've got some fresh parsley, so I'll just throw you a bit of that off. Chickly chop a bit of that, put that on top. That might burn, so I need to make sure it's sort of under the cheese, or mix up with the cheese a little bit. So there we go, so there's two vegetarian options there. I'm going to put them in the oven anyway. I'm going to leave them in the oven and I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to record it again when they come out. So you'll see them in a minute. Thank you.